let us begin again uh, speaking about um, estrogens and its relationship to, um, to breast cancer. So again, there are three forms being E1, E2, and E3. E1 binds to these estrogen receptors on breast cells and binds five times longer than E2 and E3. This is the reason why we want to reduce estrone and try to shift the estrogens towards E2 and E3. Tamoxifen is the well-known drug for women who have had or who have um, breast cancer, which has been shown to be estrogen, uh, estrogen positive, um, meaning that their tumors will grow if they are stimulated by estrogen. So tamoxifen blocks these receptors so that it cannot be stimulated as much by estrogens. The problem is that one of the side effects from tamoxifen is that it upregulates a gene called CCND1, which uh, when that's upgraded or upregulated, it develops a, uh, a treatment resistant form of cancer, which is very, um, which is, has bad, really bad side effects. So um, iodine and iodide downregulate several estrogen receptor genes, repressing estrogen's effects on breast cancer cell metabolism. This is probably the reason why the study from The Lancet showed that uh, those individuals or those cultures which have a higher nutritional intake of iodine had a lower incidence of breast cancer. The um, amazing research just came out about a year ago, year and a half ago, was that iodine will downregulate the CCND1 gene. Therefore, it's a perfect um, adjunct to be taken with tamoxifen. Let's talk about benign breast disease, or BBD, which includes fibrocystic breast disease and many others. It's primarily due to too much estrogen and also can be due to too little progesterone. There was a a report called the Ghent Report, where 92 women um, had uh, a breast, benign breast disease with symptoms of pain, etc. Having been through an examination with a physician at the start of the study, taking iodine at different strengths for a period of time, and having remarkable uh, results and improvement with the symptoms of the majority of these women. It was submitted to the FDA in 1997 and rejected because of iodine not being a drug. The Breast Journal, uh, 111 women, 2004, uh, to some extent repeated the same uh, uh, as the Ghent report, their, their criteria, and found almost identical results. In the New England Journal of Medicine in 2005, it was recognized that benign breast disease is a recognized, now a recognized risk factor for develop development of breast cancer. So the idea here is that if we can prevent uh, fibrocystic breast disease through various treatments, including iodine, we can also reduce an amazing risk factor for breast cancer. Let's review a bit of the research again, back to the 1976 Lancet study of uh, comparing different uh, uh, regions of the world, um, them stating that dietary iodine intake may reduce the risk of breast cancers. Also, iodine reduces breast cell changes, such as cystic or fibrocystic breast disease, which is a known risk factor for breast cancer. Iodine downregulates several estrogen receptor genes, which means that um, uh, the, these genes, these um, receptors on breast cells, such as breast cancer cells, will not be as, uh, let's say, sensitive to estrogens. Iodine also improves 
thyroid hormone levels, which helps to maintain normal levels of estrogen because thyroid hormones stimulate the production of sex hormone binding globulin, which binds estrogen um, and prevents it from stimulating uh, breast uh, cells. Iodine stimulates TSH, which increases these sodium iodide symport channels uh, for absorbing iodine into breast tissues. Iodine protects tissues from these ECDs or endocrine disrupting chemicals. Let's look at that uh, one study from Paris, uh, actually from Pisa, Italy, <coughs> where 103 of the 103 women with diagnosed breast cancer, um, 47 of them had breast disease. Uh, that would be non-toxic goiter, goiter being uh, an enlargement of the thyroid gland due primarily to deficiency of iodine and excess estrogen. Uh, these women also had a uh, pretty high incidence of autoimmune disease for, thi for thyroid. Again, iodine deficiency and excess estrogen is a cause of the toxic goiter, and women with goiter have three times the risk factor of developing breast cancer. The um, uh, other underlying, not underlying, but the other factor, which was the autoimmune disease for thyroid, um, TS the theory is primarily TSH um, um, is elevated when thyroid hormones start to drop. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to make more thyroid hormones, and it does that primarily by increasing levels of hydrogen peroxide inside of thyroid cells. Hydrogen peroxide helps to convert um, I iodide to iodine. It's a necessary step in the production of thyroid hormones. But if there's not adequate amounts of iodide, then the hydrogen peroxide will continue to increase, levels will continue to increase because of TSH still staying, staying at high levels. This inflammation caused by hydrogen peroxide causes damage and sometimes the um, destruction of thyroid cells. Then the immune system comes in to clean up the mess, and that is when we a uh, person is more predisposed to developing the autoimmune, autoimmune thyroid disease. We also found recent research that there's something in the blood of patients with autoimmune thyroid disease that inhibits the iodine from being taken up through these NIOS channels into breast tissue. It's another reason why there's this association between breast cancer and autoimmune thyroid disease. So let's review briefly the low thyroid hormone symptoms and the seven primary causes. The first being elevated estrogen, again, because estrogens bind thyroid hormones, so you don't have as much free thyroid hormones, so the metabolic rate slows down. Estrogens also lower iodine uptake. They also lower the number of NAS channels, and they increase the thyroid cell growth, causing goiters. The second reason for low thyroid hormone symptoms is an undernourished thyroid gland. If the thyroid does not have adequate amounts of iodide, then it cannot make thyroid hormones. Other nutrients which are essential for the production of thyroid hormones are selenium, zinc, vitamin A, and also in some people with severe iron deficiency, iron is also essential. The third cause would be the poor conversion of the inactive thyroid hormone, T4, into the active T3 thyroid hormone. This happens primarily in the liver, but also inside of your cells. Um, what's required in the liver would be selenium. Selenium activates the, a particular enzyme, which pulls off one atom of iodine from T4 to make T3. Zinc and vitamin A are also essential. And any kind of liver disease uh, predisposes a person to having very poor conversion. Even uh, congested or uh, toxic liver without necessarily liver enzymes being elevated is another reason for poor conversion. The fourth, again, is autoimmune thyroid disease. This is treated primarily with anti-inflammatories or antioxidants such as glutathione, selenium, uh, vitamin D if a person is deficient in that hormone. 
and omega-3 essential fatty acids, fish oils, which have known anti-inflammatory properties. Let us go on to the fifth uh, cause of low thyroid hormone symptoms, uh, but first you'll need to go to uh, video number three.